What's going on mobile gamers? Today I'm going to show you guys how to play some Nintendo Wii on your own too. So let's jump in and show Kong what we can do. Alright gamers, so I'm going to show you guys how to set up some Nintendo Wii on Dolphin. Not Dolphin MMGR, we're going to be using Dolphin Beta. So all we're going to do is go to our Google Chrome. We're going to go to Dolphin Emulator. So we're going to just type in Dolphin Emulator as our search we're going to go into dolphin-emu.org. We're going to go up to where it says download at the top. Now I'm going to zoom back out. And you're going to scroll down. This is up to your preference. I like to use the latest build. That is the nightly build or the daily build. Whatever you want to call it. As of today, doing this video, it's 5.020358. Now, the stable build is 19870. That means that it's the build that they have released for us to actually use. And there isn't any extra features or anything like that. But I like this one, 20358. So what we're going to do is we're going to click that Android icon and download it. Now, of course, this is all depending on your uh, download speed. This shouldn't take too long because it's not that big. Now that it's downloaded, we're going to click Open, Install, Click open again, click no on enable usage statistics. I don't really care for that. I don't want my emulator to be sending data from my device anywhere. Now, the next thing, I'm not going to show you how to get Wii games. There are multiple videos out there, including on my channel, how to get some games. So I'm going to just basically show you how to configure setting up your games. Now, I'm going to be using my nintendo wii folder which is right here click use this folder click allow and it's going to load my games by default now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our graphics configuration settings so you're going to click the settings cog at the top right hand side click graphics i always use my video backend as OpenGL because it's more accurate shader compilation mode i just leave it at specialized Compile shaders before starting, I turn that on. My aspect ratio, this is all up to your preference. If you want to force it to 4x3 and make it look like it's a tube TV, that's up to you. I like to just leave it at auto or force 16x9. Stretch to fit window, some games look great. Stretch to fit window. Now you got to think about uh, the GameCube side of this application as well. So GameCube, most of them will be sitting at 4.3 or 4x3, whereas I want to see my games at either 16x9 or stretch. Now we're going to go down to enhancements, internal resolution. Most of the games that I have tested out run great at two times resolution. Now, yes, this device can handle 1080p, but 720p honestly on smaller screens like this are great and even any devices or screens that are under 22 inches i think are 720p uh doesn't matter in my opinion but that's my eyes and two times resolution that means that you don't really have to mess around with changing the resolution on most of these games now if you find that some games do have any issues just go back to one times resolution but the Odin 2 is pretty powerful and chunky to actually be able to process the resolution upscaling at whatever max settings you want it to be. Now, I've messed around with this and tried to set some games to like six times and yeah, don't even try. But <clears throat> uh, that's up to you. Now, widescreen hacks, I'm not going to use that. I always find issues with widescreen hacks. I know some people might say differently. That's up to your preference as well. And that's just the gist of that. Hacks. Now, I always like to skip EFB access from the CPU. Um, this is just the frame buffering, and I don't want my CPU to be handling any of that information. Now, again, this is up to preference, and if you see any issues with some of your games, then you can turn that back off. Texture cache accuracy, I leave it at fast. I don't turn on the GPU texture decoding. Don't touch that at all. That just starts causing issues for Dolphin. I don't know why. Um, and everything else is just set up this way. Now, we're going to go to GPU driver at the bottom. Now, I don't think the one that has 19870 has the GPU driver option. You can leave the default driver. I haven't seen any issues with leaving the default driver, but I have found significant changes when it comes to using the latest driver, which is the Yuzu uh, Mesa Turnip 24 driver, and that's what we're going to install today. Now, I will put a link in the description below for that. 
Now I have this inside of my switch files folder and in my drivers folder, and we're gonna be using that turnip driver. Now we're gonna click on advanced in our configuration settings. Don't click advanced where I just clicked advanced. And we're gonna go down to advanced. We're gonna go all the way down to where it says override emulated CPU clock speed. Certain games need you to change this clock speed up to 130%. Uh, like Zelda, for example, if you have Zelda's uh, special edition game, then that game you will need to specifically set that up to 130%. Otherwise, 100% and below, down to about 60%. But this device itself, I've never noticed any issues. I've played all the way through at 150cc on Mario Kart. I've played multiple levels on Donkey Kong Country and a few other games that I haven't noticed any significant issues with turning down your CPU's clock rate. You can do it though, 80%, that will be great for your CPU not rendering so much, but with even the base model device, you won't need to change anything. Now for Wii input, this part is going to be a little bit different depending on the device that you're set up to. What I mean by that is I have this device just defaulted to the Odin actual controller if you changed it to xbox your buttons are going to be backwards in this case so we're going to go to wii input i'm going to go to settings cog now you'll see up here it says odin controller if you had the xbox one it'll say xbox you just got to remember that your buttons layout is going to be a little bit backwards for this but we're going to go to all the way down to wii remote we're going to go to buttons and again buttons are going to be backwards right so my A button is this A button right here. If you're going to have your A button down here, then it's going to be your B button. I know that's going to be confusing, but I like my A button over here. I like my B button down there. Now for one, it's going to be my X. Two is going to be my Y. So that's just basically the same layout as like a Nintendo Switch controller, for example. And it makes sense to me for most of my games. The negative symbol is just our paw or our negative button which is our square button at the top plus button is our play button home button that activates the wii menu home button now if you have any other configurations for wii setup and you want to go home or you have the wii bios or whatever then you can put the button as like your m1 or m2 buttons which are on the back of your device i don't set that up d-pad that's pretty straightforward which is your d-pad left right and your hotkeys i don't set these up i have never these significant to be used now we're gonna go back motion simulation this is just for your pointer now I set up my right joystick for this so we're gonna click up down left and right make sure that these match up with how I set it up so watch this see how it does that full axis 11 plus plus axis 11 go back into it clear it out and then press right again make sure it says 11 minus 11 plus 14 plus 14 minus and then i'm going to scroll all the way down to where it says auto hide i'm going to turn that on so this will auto hide the the pointer what i mean by that if you ever played wii we have that pointer where we can use our wii remote and point at the screen and i find it very annoying when that pointer wants to automatically start clicking things or moving around so that's why i put auto hide on and you can actually hide it yourself, but I'm not gonna show you that because I think this is the best setup for that. Motion input, we don't really need to set this up unless you're using games that need motion. Otherwise, the accelerometer for the motion input, this is just your main Wii remote, right? So this isn't your, your nunchuck or anything. This is just your weight, main, main, ah, main Wii remote, and it's already got the setup for your accelerometer in here. Now, we're going to set up our accelerometer for our nunchuck as well, so that we get the most uh, benefit out of our actual movement of our device. Because I've noticed if you don't set up the nunchuck, the motion only allows you to do this, whereas when you set up it, you can go like this, and your smashing, like I showed you at the beginning, will work perfectly, or any motion that you need to. So, now we're going to go to our nunchuck. We're gonna set that setting cog. My C button's gonna be my L1. My Z button's going to be my L2. My stick, up, down, left, right. We're gonna go all the way down, go all the way down, keep going, keep going, keep going. And we're gonna go in here where it says accelerometer again. 
Now you can do two things. You can either long press it to open up the settings or you can press the three dots. You can't just click it and set up the buttons because there's no button to set up. So we're gonna long press this. We gotta change this drop down to device sensors. And now you're gonna be able to see that there is options for accelerometer right, left, forward, backwards, up, down, gyro pitch up, all that kind of stuff. So accelerometer up is going to be this device. So let's go back into that again. So device sensors, accelerometer up, device sensors, accelerometer down, And we're going to do left, right, and then forward and backwards. So this is pretty straightforward, pretty simple once you figure out how to get this going. And again, like I said, this is basically so that we can utilize the whole device's uh, motion simulation. Otherwise, like I said, I found that if you don't enable this, for the actual nunchuck, if you're using the nunchuck in Wii Remote method, then you're gonna have issues. Make sure Attach Motion Plus is turned on. Now, I'm gonna show you this. I find the vibration super intense on this device, so I like to turn the vibration off. This is up to your preference. If I'm laying in bed and I'm playing this or something, my vibration is gonna shake the whole bed. So all I did was I just clicked clear, clear, and if you wanna turn it back on, you just click that motor zero but I like to turn it off and I'm gonna turn it off for the sake of this video and that's up to you. Now, we have most of the configuration set up for our base set of games. I only have two on here right now. I have a whole bunch of games in my SD card, but this device is only 128 gigabytes, so I didn't put more than that on here. If you wanted to set up different configurations for specific games so like if i wanted to put three times resolution for donkey kong i'm going to long press on the game i'm going to go down to where it says edit game configuration i'm going to go to graphics settings i'm going to go to enhancements i'm going to change my internal resolution to three click back go back go back now you'll see a save settings for sf801 that basically means that that specific game has its own settings set up. And then if I go into my Wii settings, that's going to um, use the default settings that we just set up prior. Now, I'm going to show you the game loading up. We're going to press back on our actual device, so the back button. We're going to go to overlay controls, toggle controls, toggle all, and then we're going to just start playing the game. So as you can see, I'm pressing A and B, and my X and Y buttons are going to be my other buttons for this game. And it's basically like playing Nintendo Switch, I guess, or using the default layout. Now, I think it's A to actually skip this. Now we're going to get into the game. I'm going to show you the motion quickly here. And then we're going to be done, because I think this is all you need to know when it comes to playing Nintendo Wii on your own 2 in 2023. Yeah, I had to throw that in there, just so I can give a little rhyme. But as you can see, we can use that motion and it works great and all the other buttons work the way that I want them to work. Hope you subscribed already. Hope you like this video. Don't forget to share it. We're trying to reach 5,000 subscribers before Christmas so I can give you guys one of those Retroid Pocket 2S green models. Oh, notice how I said one of those because I got a couple more coming and I'm going to be giving them away as well. See you next time because we're going to be using GameCube in our pocket. Bye -bye.